just west of this desert jewel sits a half mile dirt oval known as Manzanita Speedway, site of Race of the Week's coverage of the Sprint Car Racing Association season opener. Shaheen, welcome to another sprint car race here on TNM Motorsports. And as always, when we bring sprint car racing action to you, I'm joined in the booth by Brad Doty, a man who was known to have a pretty heavy right foot when he used to race sprint cars. Brad, these SCRA sprint cars don't have a lot of downforce and about 700 plus horsepower in the motor. Quite an unruly beast to tame. Very exciting racing. They run a big left rear tire, so the car will drive off the corner because of the lack of the downforce you talked about. But that makes the car push getting into the corner. So they have to back the car in, and it makes for close, tight racing. A lot of great fun out on the racetrack. We'll have a lot of action in the pits as well. Covering the pit area for us tonight, two gentlemen. We'll start things off with Bobby Gerald. Guys, tonight marks the 100th race for SCRA. The defending champion of the series is Ron Schumann. How good is the flying shoe? In 99 SCRA races, he's made the feature event 96 times, 71 top five finishes in those 96 races. Ronnie, that's amazing. Yeah, you didn't even know that, did you? Oh, I didn't know that. You, you taught me something. <laughs> Good deal. Now, you know that everyone's going to be gunning for you because you're the defending series champion. Are you ready for the challenge? Yeah, well, um, you know, the car's pretty good. Uh, um, we got a new LS car towards the end of last year, and it's the same one. I got it the way I like it, I think. And uh, Skip Shuck put it together good over the winter, and I think we're ready to roll. All right, he's going to be in that black number two car. Dave Reef is standing alongside our quick qualifier. Dave? And what a great lap it was. The gas man gets it done. A 19.218. Richard, you were almost a tenth faster than the rest of the field. Yeah, it feels good. It's uh, Bruce Bromley and Rod and Shaven, my car owner. They put together a new car after last year, and uh, it feels good to come out and uh, set quick time. Now, this driver was one race away from being the defending SCRA champion till late last year in Paris. All he had to do was kind of get a good finish, but it didn't work out. Tell us about the two incidents. Uh, we just, uh, just like tonight, we started out and went out to qualify and uh, just put in 100% effort and went down there and bicycled just like tonight, uh, except uh, instead of coming down on all four wheels, we turned over, flipped pretty violently, and uh, so that pretty much took us out of contention. And you even had a second when you got into a backup car. Yeah, I, I was fortunate enough. Uh, some other guys were offering me cars. I got in another car, went back out. It was a real fast deal. We were in the first heat and uh, just got over a guy's wheel getting into the into actually the same turn three there and turned over again, and then uh, that was it for the night. Well, 10th quicker. He's already got a good start to the 1997 season yet, but don't write Richard the check yet. He's already got to start eighth in the past Masters dash coming up now, so he's got his work cut out for him. Earlier tonight, though, we had four heat racing events that helped set the stage for tonight's racing action. And in heat race number one, what a performance by the number four car, J.J. Yaley. He had the car set up perfectly, and he was in control, stalking past the earlier race leader, Keith Williamson, and then pulling away. Also moving forward, though, was Richard Griffin, the gas man, who started 10th and was moving forward. The Silver City, New Mexico driver on his way to the front. But he couldn't quite get all the way to the front. That's because J.J. Yaley was hooked up. The left rear coming off of turn number four. And staring him in the face was the checker flag on heat race number one. The Phoenix, Arizona native gets the job done. Top four transfer to the A main. Griffin, Troy Klein, and Sid Blanford moving on. We didn't qualify too good. We drew a real bad pill to qualify. And uh, once I got out there, I just stretched out a little bit and uh, got some signals from the crew and told me I was doing okay and uh, just held on for the win. Good battle at the start of heat race number two between the 87 of Jerry Coons Jr., the 98 of Vern Sweeney, and the 70 of Eric Wilkins. And when Sweeney gets up into the marbles, that allows Wilkins to sneak by on the bottom side as the cars exit turn number two. They would stay that same way. Jerry Coons, Eric Wilkins, and Vern Sweeney all the way to the finish. But the guy that struggled in this heat race would be the 15X car of Billy Boat. You see him in the black car on the bottom of your screen trying to slide up high and stick that fat right rear on the cushion. When he gets too high, a few cars get past him. He would charge back, though, to a transfer position and move on to tonight's A-Main event. We're struggling just a little bit. You know, this is a brand new race car, and we're trying to get the setup right on it. You know, it's, it's kind of trying to hit the fence coming off the corner and kind of keeping me busy right now. Great two-car battle between a pair of open-wheel specialists in heat race number three. That's Ron Schumann and Rick Zeal. Schumann in the black number two. Zeal in the 35 holding off the flying shoe until Mark Casella spins. 
That sets up a restart where Ron Schumann would look to the bottom side in turn number three, but Zeal doing a masterful job finding the moisture and the advantage comes off of turn number four with the lead. Schumann, not one to give up though, continues to work to the backside of the 35 car. And now we'll take an inside line. That's flying shoe, Ron Schumann moving into the lead. From there, the two-time SCRA champion from Tempe, Arizona would never be headed as Rick Seal holds on for the number two spot. Bobby McNovich finishes third. A big name finishes fourth. That's Tony Stewart as Mike Kirby is headed to the B main. I don't know who's in that 30 car. He was doing a good job. I kept waiting for him to make a mistake too early. He didn't make no mistake, so I figured I had to get him on a restart. Heat number four featured a hard charger coming from the back of the pack. The 45 car is Corey Cruzman sneaking to the bottom side, making his way to the front. Also charging the 48 car of Lee Brewer Jr., who battled from the last starting spot. That's the white car on the bottom of the racetrack. Everybody chasing, no one catches the number 19 car, though. Rodney Argo gets a great restart and moves on to the heat race win. Corey Cruzman, Steve Osling, and Lee Brewer Jr. also transfer. Tom Hall, B main bound. Well, we had a good opportunity to get front there on the restart, so uh, we went up there and uh, just did what we could. That's the heat race story from here in Manzanita. When Race of the Week returns, we'll have our Dash in the Sea feature. Lap away from the green flag for the trophy dash with the SCRA cars here at Manzanita. This is all the big dogs. Corey Cruzman and Bobby McNovich on the front row. Troy Klein, Steve Osling in row two. Row three, Tony Stewart and Lee Brewer Jr. In the last row, Ron Schumann, the flying shoe, and the gas man, Richard Griffin, making up the field of eight cars. What a good field it is. That's the defending champion, SCRA champion, Ron Schumann, and second place, Richard Griffin, starting on the tail side by side. So the JE Pistons passing Masters trophy dash set to go. Schumann's gonna be one to watch coming up through the backside of this. Steve Vaughn with the green flag in his hand, just waiting for the cars to come off a of four. Great jump for Bobby McNovich. Schumann goes to the bottom side. The gas man to the top side. They try to come up through the back. Osling fighting with Troy Klein for third. Squeezing by on the outside. Boy, there didn't was much room up there. Is it? But they know how important it is. They got to get up this where they're going to the main event up. So every spot is very important. Osling's car was just finished on Tuesday. They loaded it up and hauled it all the way down here to go racing with the season opener. This, oh, and oh, look at Klein slide up into the cushion. He lost a lot of ground, Brad. Yeah, he did. Pumped the right rear, jumped it, and flew in. Pumped the front end over, and it did. It cost him a lot of time. Schumann picks up a couple of spots. He's onto the backside of Lee Brewer Jr., who is working Tony Stewart right now, the yellow car in front of him. Stewart trying to catch up to Osley. Good battle going on in the middle of this pack. Well, they're just racing all over the racetrack. They're two and three wide. McNovich and Corey Cruzman are pulling away. There you see him. McNovich out in front. Cruzman in the black car trying to catch him. Cruzman's had a rough couple of years, two years ago, flipping 15 times down the front straightaway at Cal Expo in Sacramento in a midget race. Busted himself up pretty good with that. Came back and suffered a concussion here last September. Now, here's a fight deeper in the field. Schumann on the outside, making a move, I believe, on Lee Brewer. Tony Stewart, the 1995 USAC Sprint Car Champion, in that yellow car as the white flag is coming out. And Osling holds on to the 12 just in front of him. That's the fight for third. One, two, three, four, five cars haven't had it for third. That's what SCRA racing's all about. Absolutely. Good show as they make their way down the back stretch for the final time. Choose your line. Lee Brewer dives to the bottom of Ron Schumann, trying to make the move in the last corner. McNovich takes the win. Cruzman comes home second. Osling takes third. Fourth goes to Stewart. Schumann should have hold it, held on for fifth. So Bobby McNovich comes out of it in a stealth chassis to take the win. The J.E. Pistons passing Masters Dash here at Manzanita. And a quick look at the finishing order for the dash. A great victory. The 21 car, Bobby McNovich. Corey Cruzman comes home second in the 45. Steve Osling, Tony Stewart, the IRL driver. Ronnie Schumann, Lee Brewer, Richard Griffin, and Troy Klein. Dave Reed. Well, congratulations to Bobby McNovich. You just won 
the PMD. And for those of you at home, that's the Pass Masters Dash. Hey, great run out there, Carla Kut. Yeah, the uh, I got to thank the crew. I got to thank our sponsors. The car's working pretty good. Uh, uh, we just got to get her a little better, I think, for the main, and we'll be in good shape. Look like the bottom's awful greasy. The top's the, the place to run. I never went to the bottom because I got such a good start on the top, and it felt good up there. So I kind of I tried the middle a little bit one lap, and it was a little loose. And you got to I think commit to the bottom or the top. And we're going to commit to the top. It looks like. We not only won the past Masters Dash, he also earned the right to start on the pole position for tonight's 30 lap A main. All right, Dave, thanks. And the crew's already working on Richard Griffin's car number 50 after a seventh place finish in the dash. They're going to see if they can get a little bit more bite out of those big rear tires. You see the crew grooving those tires, looking for every help they can get. The cars for the C feature of the SCRA competition here at Manzanita are rolling off. This will be a five lap race with two drivers transferring on to the backside of the B main. Steve Sussex Jr., Danny Ent in row one, Jim Blankern, Cal Smith, row two, Jason Leffler and Mark Hart, row three, Joe Custer and Rick Heinrichsen rounding out the field, the ninth car in the field, Chad Jones out of Marietta, California. Two guys going on to the B with a final shot to the A. Here we go for five laps at Manzanita. Sussex takes the lead, going into turn one. Good move to the outside there, get yourself a transfer spot. Now if you can hang on. Actually closing, yeah, closing. Closing on, on the leader. Oh, he's gonna take, take it on the inside. That's the 46 car. Oh, oh they went together. They got together in turn one, everybody. Everybody pulled it through. Good job, guys. Looks Did like a, a nice problem job. for the 91. Looks like you might have a flat left rear. That'd be Sussex. Look at that left rear, Brad. Looks like it's right down on the rim. See that? Yep, it is. It's going. It's not completely flat yet, but it's going down. That's going to be a big problem. Yeah, he's pulling in now. He, he realizes it's down and back to the leader. Coming off of turn two. This is Danny Ent. Danny Ent. 1997 SCRA Rookie of the Year, hopeful when the C feature make his way to the A. That'll help his cause with that. Well, he's looking real good, pulling away from uh, the 46 car of Jim Blanker. Yeah, and then Cal Smith rides along in third in car 39 out of Montclair, California. One spot out of a transfer. Look at this. Guy come the black car just took in his, drove right into second place. The 20 car. One to go. 20 car, Jason Le Leffler made a nice move. Out of Long Beach, California, not exactly known for a sprint car hotbed, but nonetheless, he's looking at a transfer. Finishing off the final lap, making their way out of turn number four. Here comes Danny N on his way to the, to the B feature, and joining him there will be Jason Leffler. And the 46 of Jim Blenkern comes up one spot short. So Danny Ant, looking to become the 1997 Rookie of the Year, will find himself at least in the B. And look at what happened here as they went down into turn number one. The 46 just got in there and, and like we talked earlier, pitched it like you have to do and stuck his right rear up and, and slapped the uh, left front and put him up in the, uh, up over the cushion. And that's what, how he got the flat tire. Well, so now the C feature completed. That leaves the B and the A as you take a look at our results for the C feature. Let's make our way downstairs. Bobby Gerald with the winner. Danny Ent in car number 81 transfers on to the B main. Danny, that was a nice run. And I think the most important thing now, you've moved up to the next level. Can he transfer out of that one? Oh, it's going to be real tough. Um, but I'm just glad I made it into the show now. It's my first time here and the first time with a 410 motor here. So it's a little bit intimidating. So. Mike, Her Mike Kirby's really helped me out a lot, and he's telling me where to put the car. i just not putting it exactly where I need to put it yet. And I'll, the more laps, I should get better as the night goes on, but we'll see what happens in the semi. Heck of a job for his first time at Manzanita. Don't go away. TNM Motorsports coming right back to Manzanita with more of the SCRA, including their Rookie of the Year, Jeremy Sherman, in the beat feature. Feature now getting set to go with the SCRA Sprint Cars at Manzanita. We will take six cars out of this 12 lap event and move them right on into the A feature, our final race of the night. 
They'll line up this way. Mike Boat and Troy Rutherford will share row number one. The Ripper, Rip Williams in the black number three, and Jeremy Sherman, one of the young hot shots of the SCRA, making up row number two. John Scott and Mike Kirby, the Kirby family here in row number three. Ricky Gaunt and Mike English up next. Tom Ball and Ricky Johnson will line up side by side behind them. Keith Williamson and Dave Anderson in the next row. Jimmy May and Rick Byler. Then Mark Cassell out of Indianapolis, Indiana, and Steve Bernard out of Tustin, California, in the next row. And branding him out, two cars that have transferred to the B from the C feature. Winner of that race, Danny Ent. Second place man, Jason Leffler, rounding out in the last row. Those two drivers probably have the toughest challenge ahead of them, Brad. Yeah, absolutely. From the back, it's a short race. They just have a hard time getting up through here. It is 12 laps. Six cars will go on to the A. I think the uh, two that we really need to keep an eye on here are Rip Williams and Jeremy Sherman, an older veteran and a young up-and-comer, two of the better drivers in SCRA. Yeah, Rip Williams in 1995 went winless in 1995, came back and won 12 races last year. So him being in this uh, B main, he'll, he's one of the faster ones and the guy, the guy to watch out for right there, the black number three. So Rip Williams on a big tear last year, the Ripper they call him. Jeremy Sherman drives the chassis, basically the house car of Ellis race cars. His stepfather, Dave Ellis, from right here in Phoenix, builds the chassis that have won the last three SCRA championships. So here we go, six cars to the A main. Problems for Troy Rutherford on the start. Look at the smoke out of the small car. Yeah, but he's fast. He got a nice jump, but it could just be a minor oil leak that uh, doesn't get any worse. He should be okay. As you see, the car is just looking everywhere for a spot to get through. Well, everybody's doing that. Look at him fanning out as they go down the back stretch. The 89 car struggling to find a place to go. Mike English out of Norwalk, California, the yellow and red number 89. He's got gone with him in the 33. There you see Rutherford, that black skull, number 11. It's going into the corner. Could be an oil leak. Yeah, yeah, it's, and it's getting worse. Uh, it's 12 laps. I don't think. Yeah, he's gonna. I don't think he can last if he keeps that up. Getting worse by the minute. So Rick Williams lies in. Oh, and he's got an oil fire now. Yep, yep. I don't think it was a blown engine. I think it was an oil fitting, oil line, or something came loose. Oh, he's got a big boomer now. He's looking for a place to pull over. He's got to get it out to the inside so that the safety crews can get to him so he can get out of the hot seat. See the oil? Look at the oil running out from underneath the, the end, the uh, bottom of the race car there. It's pouring out of the bottom. Oil smoke getting on the... the uh... He should know what it is by then too, right? But the, yeah, but I, did, I didn't notice this before. Did you see all the sparks flying out from underneath? So it, I can't, I still can't metal think... Metal on it, metal there. Yeah, but I still... Can't see it was a, a, a blown engine because it smoked so long before. Usually if it blows up, it's an explosion. And uh, I don't know, maybe the oil pump came apart, broke. It was spectacular. Great work by the TNN cameras to catch it. Troy Rutherford, tough night in the skull number 11. Oh, hi, California's Troy Rutherford was leading the B main when the car let go. Troy, how disappointing. Yeah, the car was working really good. I don't know what happened to the motor. Uh, I think something like going, I don't, I'm not unsure what happened to it. We'll have to take it back to the shop and see what happened to it. So the SCRA Sprint Car is ready to take the green once again with the B feature. We'll take six of these cars on to the A main. We've completed two of the scheduled 12 laps. Rip Williams out front now with Jeremy Sherman right behind him. Watch the orange cone. Whenever the Ripper wants to stand on the gas, he'll have 700 horsepower, sending him off to turn three. There they go. Sideways, slinging the mud into the grandstands, goes Rip Williams. Good fight for third on behind him with Mike Kirby, former winner in a 360 sprint car here last year. Made a nice move to get himself up into third, and he's uh, closing in on uh, Jeremy Sherman, second. See the cars in that? Ricky Gaunt, the 33 car, there you see him. The bluish purple color number 33 is the last one with a transfer spot just in front of him. The 83 of John Scott out of Hesperia, California. The 74 in the mix as well, looking for a transfer Mike Boat. Line for second, right there you see Jeremy Sherman in the Ellis chassis car. Number six is Mike Kirby. 
The Lamina, California driver. A lot of different chassis combinations in this one. Our leader, Rick Williams, in a Stinger chassis, the only one in the field. Yeah, these guys have a lot of different designs and different uh, aspects of these race cars that they're trying different things. Uh, I noticed all, all kinds of different radius rod lengths and, and shocks, and uh, everybody's trying something unique, trying to make it work. Looking back behind, John Scott runs in fourth. There you see him, the yellow 83. The fight behind him, that's Gaunt, the 33, and the yellow 74 on the inside of Mike Pote, who started on the pole of this. And Gaunt goes to the high side and try to take the spot away. And the fight for second gets hot again. Jeremy Sherman, a young driver, doing a great job here, fighting it off with Mike Kirby. Jack Hotchill was a teammate of his at the Chili Bowl just a few weeks ago. And and uh, really liked it. Jeremy Sherman. He's been really a guy to watch. Hodgson was really impressed with him. Sherman won here in 1994 to mention Manzanita. He's still holding off the six of Mike Kirby. Kirby had a broken leg in the end of 1996, so he hasn't really been in a race car for a while. As we continue to watch this battle for second, uh -oh. there's a ripper out front. The black car, Kirby takes second place. Jeremy jumped the cushion there a little bit, had to lift the throttle and bobbled uh, just enough that uh, Kirby got back by, or got by him for second place. Kirby knows how to get around Manzanita. He picked up wins here in 93 and 94. This is great racing here. As you can see, the difference in the line. Jeremy likes that cushion, doesn't he? And both of them actually are closing in on Rick Williams or later there. You see the black number three. They call him the Ripper. He had problems with his heat race. That's why he finds himself in the B. In fact, he chose probably the worst heat race to be in. It was just loaded with big name talent. Just not enough spots open. Ripper has got a challenge coming from Mike Kirby. Kirby will go to the bottom going into turn one here. If he can get a momentum to slide up in front and take the line, but he doesn't have enough. Well, the Ripper knows he's there now, doesn't he? Yes, he sure does. You hear him coming first, and there he goes right by him. Talk about backing it in. Did you see Kirby? Did you see that backing that thing in? It took the slide job right up in front of him. Classic move by Mike Kirby as the white flag comes out. Just one more left to go. Fighting now, for position to the eight feature. I'm sorry, Ralph. Well, Jeremy Sherman diving to the bottom. I thought he was going to get ripped there going into turn one. Well, he's got one more pair of turns to try and win. He'll stay up top. The Ripper goes to the bottom, and here comes Kirby looking for the win. Mike Kirby with a brilliant bit of driving takes the win. The Ripper gets second, and the rest of the field comes on through, including Jeremy Sherman, who will finish off in third. Stay where you are. We're coming back to Manzanita to talk to our winner when we come back. And Brad Doty with you. It's been a great night of racing. Let's go down to the pits with our B feature winner standing by with Dave Reed. Mike Kirby, good looking B main there. Who said you can't pass on this track? You came from sixth. Yeah, this is a good racetrack tonight. It was, you know, this is a brand new chassis. We started a little rough, but I think we got to figure it out now. Did you get a good time? You're going to get a good starting spot now for the A? No, nah, I think we start in eighth row, but maybe we can make it exciting for everybody. We already made it exciting in the B main. And hey, this guy broke a leg last year, still finished tenth in the points, so watch out for him tonight. So the field for our A feature is complete. Uh, before we can roll them off and get started with the 30 laps of green flag racing, let's introduce you to one of the guys who will be starting on the front row, Corey Cruzman, who is standing by with Bobby Gerald. Corey Cruzman starting outside of the front row. You won here twice last year. Can you do it tonight? Oh, well, I hope so. We got a pretty strong field tonight. You know, we got a lot of people starting behind us, but uh, this place is good to us and bad to us. So hopefully tonight it'll be good for us. Boy, and Corey's not lying. Starting behind him and way back is a guy we're going to keep our eyes on. He's with Dave Reef. That man would be J.J. Ely. And talk about strong. This man led the most laps last year, but starting outside of row number eight can't be too easy. No, it can't. You know, the uh, Action Performance Diecast Collectibles car was real strong in the heat race. Uh, we've been off the racetrack for quite a while now. Uh, we've made a lot of changes to the car, and we're planning on coming from the back and make this a real exciting race. Shows you how important that time trialing is. He did win his heat, but he's got an uphill climb in tonight's A-Main. The driver in the black driving suit is Ron Schumann, who hails from Tempe, Arizona, right here in the Phoenix area. And he's made lots of laps around Manzanita, a real living legend in the world of sprint car racing in the Southwest. Earlier, Bobby Gerald had the opportunity to introduce us to the Flying Shoe. In 1972, a 20-year-old rookie took his first laps here at Manzanita Speedway. 
That rookie's name, Ronnie Schumann. And now 25 years later, he's still at it. He's won the Knoxville Nationals. He's won five Western World Championships. He's won eight turkey nights in the midget. He's had a great career. And Ronnie, I know in the 25 years here at Manzanita Speedway, you've got obviously a lot of stories to tell. Heck, you even saw Billy Boat grow up here, didn't you? Yeah, I helped him race when he first started on motorcycles, but I was racing for his dad at that time, and, and uh, I won a main event one night in his dad's car, and they had fan of the week, and he was the fan of the week. So when he was about nine years old, I guess, yeah, he gave me a trophy one night. Now tell me this. Uh, we've heard some talk that maybe this is it for you. Yeah, this is, uh, I think this will be like my farewell tour. You know, I mean, I'll run this year and say goodbye to everybody and, and have a good, fun year and, and make it their last one, hopefully maybe win some races. He's had one heck of a career, and now he's hoping that his son Casey will be able to do just as well. Ah, the flying shoe and his son, and now the car's getting ready for the A feature, including the 50 of Richard Griffin when we come back. Race of the week. We're bringing the SCRA season opener to you from Manzanita Speedway in Phoenix, Arizona. Let's take you to the grid now. Row number one, Bobby McNovich and Corey Cruzman on the front row. Row two will be Steve Osling in the 12. And IndyCar star Tony Stewart in the 20 AZ. Row number three, the flying shoe, Ronnie Schumann on the inside, and Lee Brewer Jr. in the white 48 on the outside. Row four, the gas man, Richard Griffin and Troy Klein. Mike Bode in the Ripper, Rip Williams back in row number five. Row six, we'll see Jeremy Sherman on the inside, John Scott on the outside, Billy Boat, Mike Kirby, row seven, Ricky Gaunt, J.J. Yaley, Vern Sweeney, Sid Blanford, Eric Wilkins, and heat race winner Rodney Argo back in row number 10. Brad, from the looks of things with this grid, it should be a great season opener for the SCRA cars. Yeah, this is the first night for these guys. It's their season opener, so they've got a few bugs to work out. A few of them might be a little rusty, but uh, they're going to have to shake that off now because we're getting ready to go green. So the field starting to pick up the pace as they come out of turn number three, 30 laps with the SCRA sprint car. between Richard Griffin and Ron Schumann. It's they like, straightened it out. Yeah, it looks like they uh, no damage. They went on. There you see the six. Everybody right now chasing car number 45, Corey Kersman. Saw Mike Kirby's picked up a lot of spots in car number six, the red machine, moving up through the field. But everybody trying to catch Corey Kersman as he comes out of turn number four. One of those going after him first is McNovich, and then it's Tony Stewart, who sits in third, and Lee Brewer Jr. running in fourth. Boy, they're having a heck of a race. They swapped the spot down in three and four, and they're just uh, back and forth here. As you see, Lee Brewer go to the bottom, slides up, takes it away, Stewart turns the car, dives back underneath the turn, coming out turn four, takes it back from him. Tony Stewart in the yellow number 20 AZ, and Lee Brewer in the white 48. Tony, with some help from the Tempe Tornado, Leland McSpadden here in the pit area, giving him a couple of pointers. Not that he needs them. Goes Berg into the bottom. He's, he found some moisture in there. Don't, we're back to the leader. Corey Kruzman with three Manzanita wins in the past two years, looking for another one. Back to third and fourth again, Lee Brewer, Tony Stewart. Good fight. Of course, Tony Stewart, the 1995 USAC Sprint Car Champion, Lee Brewer giving him a run for his money. There you see the Ripper coming through. Car number three, the black one. He's got Steve Osling to the inside of him, the white car with the yellow stripe, and the black with the yellow number two, Ronnie Schumann coming into the fight with him. There's, there's a race all the way through this, uh, Ralph. You just can't hardly keep up. Everybody's uh, fighting for position all the way through the pack. The Sprint Car Racing Association, SCRA, having at it on the half mile here at Manzanita. Yellow flag comes out. I don't know what for, Brad. I, right there, there we go. There. Ricky Gaunt, the 33. Torrance, California driver. And purple 33 up along the wall, coming out of turn number four. Down to the pits now to check in with Dave Reed. 
Harlan Willis, Corey Kruzman, crew chief, you got a good car out there. The 45 looks strong. Yeah, yeah, we're good so far, but we got a long ways to go. We, uh, he's just got to stay smooth because uh, if we keep this up at this pace, we're going to be fine. Did you set the car up for the long haul or did you try to get out early quick? No, absolutely. We're looking for the long haul. He's a little too tight right at this moment, but he'll be fine coming in. Don't go away. We're coming back to Manzanita and we're going to see if Corey Cruzman can hang on and hold on. Bobby McDovey. Here at Manzanita, the SCRA car is just about set to go back to green with our 30 lap A feature. And they go now. Out front is Corey Cruzman trying to hold off all the challengers. But Bobby McNovitz putting it on him in a hurry. We saw a lot of the guys packing the cushion under the yellow, but nobody, uh, these two, messing with it right now. There's looking Ronnie Schumann and Richard Griffin coming with them. Those were the two guys that were packing the cushion, Brad. Yep, and they're up there making work, trying to go around uh, Rip Williams. Those two guys, Ron Schumann and Richard Griffin, swapped the point lead back and forth last year, going into the last and final race of the year. Uh, Ron Schumann was winless. Uh, Griffin had 31 point lead. He flipped in the heat, flipped, or flipped in qualifying, flipped again in the heat race. Ron Schumann went on to win the main event and the point championship for 1996. Great racing going on right now. We continue to watch this fight. A little bit back here inside the top five. Four cars going at it. That's Osling in the white with the yellow number 12. Right in the middle. Griffin in the red number 50. And Schumann's going to go downstairs and pass them both in the black number two. Put the slide job on it. We've seen so many times before. Moves right back up to the cushion. Texaco Havlin, checker auto parts number two of Ronnie Schumann. And Richard Griffin swiped the wall coming out to turn two there with the right rear. Look at J.J. Yaley picking up the left front tire of the orange number four. That youngster we told you started all the way back in 16th, and he is flying. He's got the ripper upstairs in the black number three. And this kid came to play. Boy, I'll say, with that left front picking up like that, they got the grace car nice and tight for him. It's leaning on the right rear, sticking the right rear. He gets, picks the throttle up, and it picks the left front wheel up. Alameda, California is Mike Kirby just behind him in the red number six. That's Rip Williams and Steve Osling right in front of, uh, of him there coming off of turn two. Now we're back. Look at this fight. The gas man to the bottom. The flying shoe up top, even after tagging the wall, these guys still going after it. Schumann isn't giving up. He dives back to the bottom. Lee Brewer right with him in the white number 48 just behind him. Very uncharacteristic of Ron Schumann to be on the bottom. Usually he's uh, running the cushion and uh, sometimes all four wheels up in the, up over top of the cushion. Corey Cruzman still leads by McNovich. Stewart is just in front of them. Look at Griffin. Watch the 50 car go right up into the wall here, courtesy of Osling. I'll tell you what, that was, he was lucky. The, the right front wheel just clipped the wall. If it would have pulled it in any harder, it would have folded the right front wheel back. And now he goes around Tony Stewart. Puts him in third position. And he's going after Bobby McNovich now. That's the next yellow car. And in front of him is the leader. He is flying, Ralph. He, he has passed human those guys and just left them behind. Stay with us. We're going to come back to Manzanita Speedway in Phoenix, Arizona and bring the SCRA cars to a close. Gas has been provided by Ryder, the official transportation company for Opry Land. In the pits for tires is number six, Mike Kirby. Won the B feature earlier tonight. We're under caution because just moments ago, the number 48, the white car of Lee Brewer right there gets tangled up and spun around, bringing out the yellow flag. Now we're just about set for the restart. While we were away, the 50 and Richard Griffin moved into second. Yeah, Corey Cruzman did not want to see this yellow. The lead he had, he definitely just out there cruising by himself, didn't want to see this. Griffin gets another shot at him as they go back to green. McNovich dives to the bottom again. Stewart upstairs. Schumann to the bottom. McNovich gets by Griffin. Great move by Bobby McNovich, who, oh boy, he makes that stick, too. What a nice move. Thought that uh, 
Griffin was uh, just going right up there and challenge for the lead. Look at Lee Brewer. The white 48 has gotten around Tony Stewart. He slips back to four. Now Stewart came back by, coming out of turn four. Ronnie Schumann slipping back a little bit. J.J. Yaley on the outside of him in the yellow number, the orange number four. But he's searching for traction, trying to find the best bite on the corner. Boy, you have to give a hand to, to Lonnie Johnson and Richard Gaff to track the pairs at this place. They've got the track in perfect, perfect condition. Got a nice cushion. He Make calls it. Manzanita Speedway. Another great night of racing here with the SCRA. They've produced another fine surface for these guys to show their abilities. What a good battle we've got as Cruzman checks out. The fight is for second. Nicknovich in front of Griffith and Brewer Jr. to the bottom. Gas man going to the bottom. Richard Griffith trying to put the slide job on. He does it. Makes it stick. Boy, did he ever. And Nicknovich tries to block Brewer. Bruce Brom Jr. spins the wrenches on Griffin's car. They've been massaging that car all night long. Getting him better and better as the evening went on. There's Schumann going by with Tony Stewart as they fight. There's the Ripper with Osling going at it a little bit deeper in the 83 car in that mix as well. John Scott out of Hesperia, California. Look back through the field, just racing everywhere. Everybody slicing, dicing, trying to get through. Rick Williams there, Ron Schumann on the outside. Well, and you can see the flat right rear there for Eric Wilkins on the 70. It looks like the night for him is done. Back to the battle now with the shoe, with the number two, and Rip Williams in the three. Schumann on the cushion, Rip Williams on the bottom, going into turn one and coming out of turn two. The white flag will be waving for Corey Kruzman as he comes across the line with one to go. Half a mile away from his 13th victory in SCRA competition. He's got a flat tire. Well, I think his tire went down. He does. The whole rear end is coming apart. Look at flat that. Flat tire. Oh, what a heartbreak. Unbelievable. The yellow and the white coming out at the same time. He took the white flag and going into turn one and two, his right rear tire went down. Oh, man. What a heartbreaker for him. Corey Cruzman, unbelievable. There's Griffin, and Cruzman's already out of the car. It's one of those things you just, you just, as a driver, you just can't believe it. I mean, you just, he was so far ahead. All he had to do was just hang on. Now, they will back up to the last lap, which means there will actually be two laps to go. Griffin will inherit the lead. McNovich will slide to second, and Lee Brewer will be put into third. Let's see what happens. He's in the cushion there. Everything looks fine right there at that right, right there it went down. See see the front yep. tires push. You can Get see the puff back. of smoke too. When it was nasty from there. And what you see shaking, that's that tire on the right side flopping around, makes the left rear. Because it's a, it's a direct. Look at the job Griffin did to avoid it. If Whoa. Griffin goes on to win this, he does he, he He's that move it. right there, yeah. Earned it. And the new leader, Richard Griffin, is in the pit. Let's go down to Bobby Gerald and Pitt Road and find out what's happened to the gas man. Richard Griffin had just taken the lead of the race, and that's when it happened. The right rear tire on his car goes flat, too. The crew going to work right now on that right rear, try to make a quick change and get the gas man back out. But in sprint car racing, he's going to have to go all the way to the back. Only a couple of laps to go. This is a heartbreaker for the Brahmi crew. What an incredible turn of events here at Manzanita. Let's bring you up to speed now. Number 21, Bobby McNovich is in the lead. But look who is right there behind him. Number four, J.J. Yaley. His father, Cactus Jack, here. This is going to be an incredible finish. The SCRA season opener here at Manzanita. What an amazing turn of events. Two laps to go. Bobby McNovich leads him past the cone. He got a horrible start, Brad. Yeah, it, it looked like his motor stumbled or something there. It just didn't pick up the speed. J.J. Yaley's going to lead him from 16th to the lead. Schumann to the bottom. The Ripper, Kevin Wimba. Schumann, who at one point looked like he was completely out of this thing, too, is battling for second spot. The white flag waits for 
J.J. Yaley, whose father packed his jack, is another living legend in the Arizona area. Has wheeled many a sprint car to midget around this half mile. Look at the battle for second. Ron Schumann and Knovich going into turn three. There's the leader, J.J. Yaley, coming out of turn four, seeing the checkered flag wave. The 100th victory for the SCRA goes to young J.J. Yaley, who started 16th and with a wild turn of events that takes out a couple of the big names, young J.J. Yaley is pumped up as he claims the historic 100th Sprint Car Racing Association victory in their 1997 season opener. Stay with us. We're coming back to Manzanita to talk to this young heart charger. A promotional consideration has been provided for this special offer from Diamond P Sports. Back to Manzanita Speedway, where J.J. Yaley has picked up his eighth career SCRA victory, holding off Bobby McNovich, the Flying Shoe, Ron Schumann, Rip Williams, and John Scott, the top five, as they cross the finish line. Let's go downstairs now and meet this excited young man standing by with Bobby Gerald. All the drama that uh, you expect to see in a traditional SCRA sprint car race unfolded right there. The drama with the tires, and this guy comes all the way from the eighth row and gets the win here in front of his hometown fans. JJ, how sweet was that? Oh, that was terrific. You know, uh, after winning the heat race and qualifying so bad, uh, I didn't know if the action uh, performance sprint car would be able to come from that far back and pass that many good cars. But uh, I think uh, my uh, crew chief, Rich, and my my parents, you know, we uh, got a great car here. There was on race mart, helped us out a lot. and. Uh, we went aggressive and it paid off. Oh, what a great victory for J.J. Yaley. Let's go down to Dave Reap with second place. Bobby, a wild race. That second place went back and forth and back and forth. And all of a sudden, here comes J.J. Yaley. Yeah, J.J. ran a good race. I want to congratulate him. Uh, I want to say hi to my uh, uh, wife and kids. And uh, we, we had a good car, but a couple little problems. We were a little tight trying to tip us over getting in and felt that a few times. Uh, it's been a long off season. I'm whooped. I'm tired. <laughs> So while there's lots of happiness going on with J.J. Yaley and Bobby McNovich, there's lots of frustration for the gas man. To Bobby Gerald with Richard Griffin. Richard Griffin, you saw what happened to Corey Cruzman. You swerved to avoid, and then you thought maybe you had the lead, but the tire was gone. Yeah, it's a shame. The car was working great. The whole team, they put 100% uh, effort in tonight, and it looked like things were going to go our way right there at the end. And uh, unfortunately, when uh, Corey got the flat, uh, we had to swerve a little bit to miss him and got into the fence and cut a hole in our tire. Tough break. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a tough break, but uh, it could be worse. Uh, we'll just have to go back to Paris the next race and see if we can pick it up there. The gas man's a good sport. What an incredible turn of events here at Manzanita with the SCRA season opener as you take a look at the rest of the finishers here at Manzanita Speedway. What an absolutely tremendous finish for J.J. Yaley, the youngster picking up a huge victory here. And he'll take over the points lead, at least for now. For Dave Reef and Bobby Gerald did a great job down in the pits. And for Brad Doty giving us more great insight up here, I'm Ralph Shaheen. So long from Manzanita. Race of the Week is a production of Diamond Peace Sports and a presentation of the Nashville Network.